So I'm listening to Dr. Michael Youssef, and he talks about when Jesus cleanses <laughs> the ten lepers. And he talks about, um, you know, we've read that scripture. And when I thought about it in my mind before he started going over it, I'm like, yeah, I know that scripture. But he talks about how if you had leprosy, you were an outcast. You were taken away to a desolate area. It was like the, it was between Galilee and Samaria in a very desolate place. And, and if someone with leprosy was approaching anybody else that didn't have it, if they could even make their way back into society, a bell, they'd have to ring a bell to warn you Lepers, lepers, lepers. Can you imagine? I don't know if anybody has been able to see the movie yet, Wonder. Have you heard about the movie? It's a, uh, a boy with, I don't think his face is that disfigured, but it's enough that people think something's really wrong with him. Um, and of course, you know, uh, some kids can be very cruel. And um, uh, Lee actually did some research on the writer. And when she was a little girl, she went into an ice cream parlor and saw this other girl that was very disfigured. And she kind of treated her the way she, she didn't um, speak up or stand out for this girl that was being mistreated. And that always stuck with her to the point that she wanted to write this, this screenplay that became the movie. And it's beautifully done because the professor at the school, because the school was for people that had money or you got, got there on a scholarship. Um, the professor at the school, there was this one particular kid, and I'm bringing this all back to my message, but there's this one particular kid who is like, oh my goodness, he's beautiful, he's smart, he's, and he decides to pick on this child that's kind of disfigured. And it's really bad, so it ends up to a point where the professor, the, the dean has to tell the parents, he's going to suspend him. And of course, you know, and if you don't, in public schools today, you cannot bully. It is a big deal. There's no tolerance. You could make an office for civil rights complaints. So people know this. You have better get a grip on it and handle it. So the kid gets suspended. Um, and other kids actually go through the experience of wanting to befriend him because he is smart. He'll, he'll give answers in class, and it's elementary level. Um, but if you feel inside, you may look great on the outside, but if you feel inside the way somebody looks, if they don't look good, you identify with that. You may not identify with the external but the feelings that come from that, for that person, you may be feeling that inside with yourself. And the other characters in the story are going through their own battles. So a couple of them really want to become his friend and they realize the other people that they thought were the caliber of friends they wanted weren't. So the, if you had leprosy, you were an absolute outcast. And nobody fought for you. You didn't have rights then, okay? So they sent you away to be with others who had the same disease. And so, um, and I don't want to. I don't want to leave this part out from the movie. But at the end, you know, the graduation and the ceremony, the end of the year, and if you move on to middle school, um, they give this like grand finale award and the, the professor hey um reads hey you guys
guys got a sneak a uh, secret back entrance or something? How did you come in like out of nowhere? <laughs> Thank you. Have a great night. Um, he reads this quote about how an inner strength attracts the greatest of hearts. Okay? So the people that got attracted to this child could not only identify with the way he looked because that's how they felt inside. But the care and the love, because they needed that too, that acceptance. And you know, you would look and go, well, what do you need acceptance? You look great. Isn't everything great in your life? You just got picked for the head, the lead part in the play, and everybody wants to be your friend. Um, and you know, it comes back to the heart that Christ had for those that were outcasts that were in pain, that were suffering. And yeah, he put his hands on people that had leprosy to heal them, but not in this particular scripture. So I'm going to read this after, I, since I gave you a little bit of that background um, that Dr. Yusuf talked about with people who had leprosy. And this comes from Luke chapter 17, I'm starting with verse 11. On the way to Jerusalem, he was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance because they knew. You, you couldn't get near people. It was against the law. They stood at a distance but lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Again, I'm in Luke 17, verse 11. When he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourself to the priest. He didn't tell them they were healed. He didn't lay hands on them. Go and show yourself to the priest because if you had leprosy, sometimes it would be in remission. And we have doctors now. We've had a lot of research and study. But then, if I had something go in remission, I might think it's gone. Right? I don't know that that's remission. But the way you would be pronounced clean is through a priest. You had to do that. And then that allowed you to be accepted back into society. Otherwise, what's happening here that the Lord spoke to me about is, you have leprosy, you're an outcast, we're going to send you away, survival of the fittest with all your other friends with leprosy. You're all one big brother. You were um, a Sumerian, whether you were a Jew, Throw them all in the same pot. They're untouchables. They're outcasts. It doesn't matter to us. So what they were really doing is experiencing a social death that preceded the actual death. And you know how painful it is when you feel... I don't think I was describe this. Um, through your own trials and tribulations in life, at times when you feel alone or you feel like nobody can identify with what you're going through. Kind of an outcast in a sense. Nobody would even believe if I told them. So, you know, that social death, that, that's painful. That's a lot of suffering. It's bad enough they're going through physically what they're going through. So he sees them and says, go show yourself to the priest because he knows that's how they're going to be readmitted into society. <laughs> and, that, and that brings about the totality of the healing, not just a physical healing, 
but an emotional healing, a social healing, a spiritual healing, in that their faith is revived. One of them, one of them we know in particular, right? Okay, so go and show yourself to the priest. And as they went, so that tells you they weren't healed and cleansed right there. Right? But as they went, they were cleansed. So let me just digress here a minute. I just want to make sure I didn't. Um, I want to reiterate that Jesus sent the ten lepers to the priest before they were healed. And they went. They know by law, they can't get near people. They can't show up without notice. Without notice. And as far as they know, they still have it, but they're obeying Christ, and they're going to go before this priest. And as they carry out, as they are obedient in believing and carrying out their faith, it manifests itself. Because, you know, once Christ does it in the spiritual realm, it's going to manifest itself in the physical, right? So they responded in faith, and Jesus healed them on the way. So then here's the question that follows from that. Is your trust in God so strong that you act on what he says even before you see evidence that it will work? And I, I have to be honest and say, you know, not every time for me. And, and why is that? Is that because I've been around this mountain before? Is that because I know what is possible, but sometimes I'm like, could it really happen? And, you know, I talked with someone about this one time, and they go, well, you know, um, Paul had a thorn and I'm like you know I don't want to hear that anymore we don't know that that thorn was physical I don't know what that thorn was I do believe in Jesus' timing I know he's a healer and if he's doing a work in me as a potter then is this part of my process? Or am I, have I just not come into the level of faith I need to come into? So, he sends them, go, go show yourself to the priest, and then they went. As they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, <laughs> when he saw that he was healed, turned back praising God with a loud voice and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet giving him thanks so one out of the ten now he was a Samaritan which is a second class citizen And he goes back, he thanks God, he falls at his feet. Then Jesus answered, were not ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, rise and go your way, your faith has made you well. That Scripture we've been hearing more and more of. Your faith has made you well. What does that say about giving praise and thanks to God? And the interesting piece is Dr. 
Yusuf address some of the thoughts this one could have been thinking that we talked about before, how the enemy likes to attack us mentally. He could have thought, why should I go back to Jesus when the religious people, they're not going back to him. Right? I don't want to go alone. I don't want to do it alone. <sighs> what if Christ rejects me when I go back to thank him? What if he said, you're a Samaritan, I only healed you because of the other Jews? What if he said, well, I'll wait and I'll just return to Jesus when the others go. And we'll thank them all together. But there was a key in that when he went back to thank Christ. He said, your faith has made you well. That sounds like the other part of the equation to me. So what I've been trying to do more of is just start thanking God for all that I'm expecting to receive in advance, thanking Him. To me, that... When I try to think of, you know, that I have some things and I'm still waiting for the complete healing. Notice I'm not saying a healing. The complete healing. And I go, you know, is it Lord's timing? Is it the thorn thing? Is it, um, do I not have enough faith? You know, what is it? Well, a big part of that has got to be me thanking God. That's how my faith is going to make me well. So I want to read this, this piece that Dr. Michael Yusuf elaborates on from that scripture. Only 10% of those whom Jesus healed expressed genuine thanksgiving, and it was not the one you expected. <laughs> Jews and Samaritans were enemies of each other. But because of their common disease, they were all classified as unclean. They were put out of town, out of society, into no man's land. The only person a leopard could be with is another leper. Death while you're living. And as I shared a social death before the actual death. So when Christ told them to go show themselves to the priest, it was so they could formally be accepted back into society, so they could formally be declared that they are clean, so they could feel that they are justified to be back in society. Because that's important too. Your emotional being is important to the Lord as well. Some people, they might think, well, you know, I have physical needs, but the social, emotional part, that's really not a priority to the Lord. It's, you know, I just really need my leg healed. But it is our total well-being, socially, emotionally, physically, spiritually, mentally. And so he wanted them to be treated with dignity again. Boy, when you're stripped of your dignity, oh my, you might as well walk out naked in public. That's what that's like. <laughs> their gratitude. Now, were they about to eat a meal the next day and they were like, Lord, thank you for this meal and my healing? We don't know. But they didn't come back shouting, wanting to thank God. They just dropped out of sight.
But they responded when Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. They went. They went on their way, and they were healed. They were obedient. Go show. Go, okay, go and heal. So is it possible to receive God's great gifts with an ungrateful spirit? But if a key piece to the faith and the wellness is thanking God, that sounds like the other part of the equation to me. Only the thankful man, however, learned that his faith had played a role in his healing. And God doesn't demand that we thank him, right? But according to this scripture, boy, he sure is pleased when we do so, then, isn't he? <laughs> and then this is the beauty of that that stands out to me. And when we thank him, he uses our responsiveness to teach us more about himself. That's like another piece of the gift there. And yeah. I'm trying to get this. Okay. Jesus said to the ten guys, go show yourself to, to the priests. So, they had whatever faith. Something. Something. No, say, it was, yeah. Okay. And they went. Mm -hmm. And along the way, they were healed. Uh, one turned back, but the other ones could have made a case for it. Well, he said, go show ourselves to the priest. So, I'm going to go do that. Mm -hmm. You know, but the one went back right, and showed so his gratitude. Yeah. That's what you're talking about, isn't it? Yeah, because it's did the praise and gratitude. Yeah. But you know, like you said, did the other nine go, well, we're just doing what he said. Yeah. He said, Go show yourself to the priest. So I'm I'm being obedient. I'm gonna go. So what made this one shout, wanting to get back to Christ, falling at his feet and thanking him that it would become the scripture? That Christ would emphasize, mm. right? Yeah, yeah. Gratitude. And you know what? Not this is just how I think. It, it could be wrong, but I don't think everybody innately. I mean, what makes you want to be thankful to God? What makes Come you on. want to pour out your heart to God? Is that gratitude? Mm -hmm. Is that Knowing his mercy and his grace and his love, it's like the strength is, you know, he attracts the greatest of hearts. Mm -hmm. Doesn't Christ attract the greatest of hearts? I'm telling you, it ties into that mm -hmm. movie just unbelievably. Mm -hmm. And that's what you saw when the woman came back. Knowing that it was nothing of his own, there's nothing he could have done. It was a gift from the Almighty One who created him for his purpose and his glory at such a time as that. Right? <laughs> created for his glory. You, 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 you. Thank goodness we don't have like 50 people in the room because I would do that with every person. You have been created for his glory. So then I have to think sometimes when I don't, Lord, I should have done it, and I'm sorry, I should have held the flags up, you know? I should have went to the wall at Whole Foods, and is it timing? Is it the thorn? And then, all I know is this. His love never fails. His love never changes. 
He does all things. I'm just, I'm right here in the palm of his hand. Like, mm-hmm. You know? And I've been created for his glory. So is it, is it full of time when the Lord wants to show his glory? I'm going to be thankful in the meantime, in the interim, along the way. Especially if the Lord teaches me more about himself in the process. Because if I can have a grateful heart at one level, so what does that mean? I can have a grateful heart at other levels? I mean, we're talking about growing spiritually. Can I grow to a new level of a thankful heart? And then what does that look like? Because I'm learning more about him. And then what is he doing in my heart? And my thankfulness knits me closer to Jesus than my asking. Many are the requests, few are the thankfulness. And I think of the sacrifice of praise. So... I want to end this. Oh, good night. See? <laughs> Please, yeah. Right. I'm just feeling in the spirit that 10 went. They were all overjoyed when they start seeing the change. Yeah. Of the 10, only one humbled himself. Yeah. Became grateful. Right. The others were so happy to be like everybody else. They kind of like pride takes over and Mm -hmm. they become worldly because they're like everybody else now. Only one humbled himself because he still remembers who he really is. And God has changed him tremendously. Mm -hmm. And God loves a humble person. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't like pride. Right. Doesn't surprise Jesus that the rest of them. Mm-hmm. became like the rest of the world. Right. The, the pathway is narrow. Mm-hmm. Nine of them fell off. Yeah, and right, right. On. Yeah. Yeah, and it is about humbling yourself. Um, you know, the Lord doesn't ask for that. He always gives us that choice and that free will. But he's so grateful for it that he emphasizes this has been Rest upon root to right, and one day here we are reading about the one that came back. So the way we can end because my thirty minutes went into, you know, <laughs> stop me, give me a cue next time, right? Um, yeah, just play music softly, perfect. That was I didn't even have to end because you know what the Lord knows what you need. You don't go in your private prayer closet and then have to come here and be like, okay, let me tell you what I need. You're talking to the same God that's omnipresent, right? It's like the kid that said, dear Lord, if you're at church on Sunday, I'll show you my new shoes. You know he saw the new shoes when he was buying them. Okay, so why don't we just let the Lord minister to us? Because he already knows our need. And I'm, if you're okay with it, I'll just come around and agree with the Lord with what he's doing and just thank him along with you. It's not about coming before him and saying, I need this and I need because he already knows it. He knows it. But to increase our faith, our thankfulness, our ability to just stay humble before him as we watch what he does manifest itself in the physical as we move forward each day. Mentally, 
socially, emotionally, physically, spiritually. So I'm just going to start agreeing on all of our behalves and thanking God. Lord, first of all, thank you for your word. Thank you for your word that's a teachable word. Yes, God. <laughs> that gives an example for us, God. Thank you. And how much you love when your children just come to you and fall at your feet and thank you. Thank you for, for all that you've done, Lord. Thank you for going through the same thing, Lord. You went through a social death before you went through a physical death, God, because you became an outcast, Lord. And you know what that's like. You know what we go through in the flesh. You did it, Lord. You did it, too. But then you conquered that for us, God. You conquered it a long time ago. We don't have to figure it out. We don't have to know how, how does this happen. And, oh, God, but this is a big thing. And how do you, and could it be? And, Lord, we just know that you conquered it, God. And we thank you. We thank you for everyone in this room, Lord. We thank you that we were physically able to make it here tonight. Lord, that our bodies work, that our arms and our hands and our legs and our feet, God, and we're breathing and we're healthy and we had transportation to get here, Lord, and we have ears to hear, God, and eyes to see, and we have hands to, to touch and lay hands on others and believe and just be helpful. A heart, we thank you for a heart that's caring, that's humble that knows how to reach out to you, God, that thirst for you, Lord. Not the things of the world, not the things that are tangible, but a heart that thirst for you, Lord. For you, God. The pure in heart, the pure in heart shall see God. We thank you for that. We thank you for the, where we dwell, God. Our, our shelter, our running water, Lord, our electricity, our jobs, the money that you provide us, Lord. The favor that we have, God. The favor that we have. We thank you that you care about the details, Lord. We know, Lord, you care it's a lie from the enemy, a lie from the enemy, that he would not care about the details. James 5.11 tells us he cares about those details. He's working on our behalf. And our faith is going to make us well. Our faith is going to make us well. Because we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. author and finisher of our faith. And Lord, we ask for an increase in faith tonight. Yes. An increase in faith tonight.